meets 25-year-old Alison Austin Hennessy, a shopping addict who's very particular about where she gets her fix. If I didn't shop, what would I do? Ali's passion for the high life has landed her in over £46,000 worth of debt, more than twice her £19,000 salary as a youth worker in a children's home. I enjoy helping people. I love helping people. That, that's all I want to do. Ali's in dire need of help. I can't carry on like this. Enough is enough, and this I've got to draw the line somewhere. And hence the reason I'm participating. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt and psychological coach Benjamin Fry have just five weeks to prize Ali away from the tills. Oh my lord! What an earth! Have you done? As Benjamin delves into the deeper reasons for Ali's behaviour... You know, I'm not saying I'm right about any of these ideas, no, I'm just... you're not. <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> Jay will find practical ways to tighten the purse strings. I don't think you've really got a choice in this. If you want Even though Ali's temper means it won't be an easy ride. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that you're saying you I want to be fucked with this shit. No, I can't be fucked with this shit. Ali lives near Deal in Kent with her husband Michael. They've been married for six months. Benjamin and Jay have persuaded them to leave their home for the morning to see if they can uncover a few clues about why Ali's in so much debt. Benjamin is searching for psychological pointers to what is driving Ali's behaviour. While Jay will try to nail down where the money's actually going. Look at that. That is a massive statement car, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very sort of lad's motor, isn't it? And that's quite a ladette pose. I wonder if that's something she spends a lot of money on being a bit boisterous. Well, it's not cheap, cars like that, you know, no, with all the bits imagine. and pieces that go on them. That's certainly yeah. not a car on a budget, is it? That's part of being an exhibitionist, I think. It's, it's like wearing a Dolce & Gabbana coat, isn't it? It's like getting into your Beamer. I wouldn't drive a mini Metro. <laughs> Not for love, nor money. I'd rather walk, in fact. <laughs> As Benjamin and Jay venture further into the house, they begin to realise that budget is not a word that features in Ali's vocabulary. Yeah. I wonder how much spending gets done on this. It does open up oh. a whole world, just which is great, desk. but not, mm. not when if you're, you're a shopaholic. Is no, it? it just makes life easier to shop on the internet. It really does. That has just increased her spending tenfold. It's a licence for her to just spend money. But it is addictive, cos I have spent thousands on it. Benjamin and Jay have a poke around upstairs. It seems the higher up they go, the more evidence there is of Ali's overspending. Wow, that is a wardrobe, a busy wardrobe. Yeah. I mean, this is a woman who's spending a lot And seem quite money. similar, some of the items. Yeah, but, I mean, talking of similar, look at this. Yeah. I mean, this girl, you know, can't really afford to be buying one pair of occasional shoes, and she's got four that are practically identical. But in Ali world, every purchase makes complete sense. Some of them are just sort of like for gardening, and then I have like three pair for best. And I have like best best, and I have a pair that I wear when I go on holiday on sand, and I have a pair that I wear when I'm on concrete, so I know they're not going to get messy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am quite bad like that. I mean, that is, that's, that's going a bit far. Whole thing and it's not just there. shopping that gives Ali a buzz. Look, little thong. Is that upside? Oh, dear, that's very nice. Oh, look, the heavy gear. Yeah. I mean, this stuff doesn't come cheap. You know, this is oh, just, yeah. like, a good couple of hundred mm. pounds worth of stuff in the playtime drawer. Yeah. Keeps her husband happy, though, perhaps. Jay is beginning to realise that Ali is a girl who splashes out on, well, absolutely everything. And Benjamin thinks he may have a good idea why. Hold on, what's this? Oh, look, that... That is, um, I think, her father. Who's oh, is that her dad? Passed away recently. And I think that what this area of the home seems to show up is a sense of kind of it being perhaps a shrine or a memorial. And clearly what she wants to say to herself and to others is, I haven't forgotten my father, I want to remember him. Mm. So that could be something significant. Benjamin and Jay are beginning to understand why Ali has built up so much debt, but they need one further bit of evidence before confronting her with her habits. 
This is going to be very revealing because my theory is that she spends mm -hmm. indiscriminately right. just across the board on anything she can find. That's another one, 2,000 overdrawn, 3,800. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a theme. OK, well, I think we should take all of these. As Benjamin and Jay are about to find out, when it comes to spending, Ali is in a league of her own. There's no other way of putting it. She is a fantastic spender. She's just mad. She just spends mad amount of money. When Ali paid £6,000 for her beloved BMW, she decided the 16-inch alloys just weren't up to scratch. The new set, just two inches wider, was what she really wanted, leaving her £900 worse off and the old set rusting in the garden. And even when Ali tries to save money, her spending addiction undoes all her good work. Oh, the trip to Manchester. We went over on these £7 flights. It was like, great bargain, nice weekend, you know, have a good weekend out. Unfortunately, when Ali got there, she spent £1,400 on a shopping spree. So my cheap like, £7 flight ended up putting me another £1,400 in debt, which I'll probably spend the next five years paying off. <laughs> but it was worth it. <laughs> With her debts piling up like used alloys, it's no wonder that Ali's credit cravings are causing marital strain. It does cause stresses when she goes out and spends such large amounts of money at one time. She really does get a buzz out of shopping. She shops like it is an adrenaline sport. And never more so than when she's angry. If Michael and I have a row, my revenge is like, uh, yeah, right, and off to Canterbury I'll go and I'll just spend hundreds. Maybe Ali wouldn't spend so much on her angry shopping binges if she wasn't so choosy about where she gets her kicks. I can't go into discount shops. They're just horrific. The way I look at it is the tat that no one else wants, and if nobody else wants it, what the hell makes them think I do? Ironically, given Ali's cheap shop phobia, her mum Anne works in a charity shop in Canterbury, and she has special reason to be worried. Of Ali's £46,000 debt, she owes her mum £23,000. I'm not holding my breath, thinking I'm going to get it all back. And if I do, I'll probably be pushing up the daisies. Because of Ali's phobia, she has never been into the charity shop to see her mum. So when Ali needs a fast cash injection, her mum has to shut up shop and meet her down the road. The whole charity shop second-hand thing just scares the hell out of me. So, um, yeah, she'll have to meet me around the corner today. Ali's mum inherited much of her money when her husband died and needs the cash she lent Ali for her retirement fund. Thank you very much. Don't do it again. No, no I'm fine, I'm fine. All right. Ali repays her mum £20 a month, which means it will take 98 years for Anne to get her money back. Oh, it makes me feel sick just thinking about it. And I have to pay her this money back if it's the last thing I do. To have any chance of paying her mum back, Ali's going to need a serious shake-up. Following their rummage around Ali's house, Benjamin and Jay have identified two key areas of overspending. It's time to meet the experts and say hello to some shock therapy. Oh, here she is. Hi, Ali. Hi, Ali. Hello. Hi. <laughs> this is Benjamin. Hi, Hi, Jay. You're looking Hi. a bit nervous. Yeah, you look a bit worried. I'm feeling a bit worried. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've got a bit of a surprise for you. We've got some things we want to show you around your house. Oh, my Lord! What on earth have you done? Oh, my God. Each tyre here represents £25 of your expenditure on motoring costs. All the motoring costs you have. And can you think how much that is? No. You spend £5,512 per annum on motoring costs. So, Alison, when you look at that, that graphic representation of the money you spend on cars, how does that make you feel? Sick. <laughs> what I'd like you to do is to come with me, fight your way through the tyres, cos round in the back garden, i got something else that I'd like to show you. Oh, my God, is it worse than this? And come and have a look out here. <laughs> <laughs> Each one of these mice, Ali, represents five pounds that you have spent on internet <laughs> shopping. It adds up to a total of three thousand seven hundred and eighty-two pounds just on impulse on the internet. Oh dear. <laughs> Which is quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. 
when you see it all sort of displayed like this, I mean, look, you just got to imagine everyone is a five pound note. I'd be rich. <laughs> exactly. You'd be a lot richer <laughs> than you are less, now. That's for sure. Poor. That is for sure. I didn't realise it was quite as severe as this, yeah. but yeah, if these were all five. It must pounds. be something to get you so in debt. So, are you beginning to see from these illustrations what it could be? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll leave the mouse house. We'll go and get a cup of tea and work out the next stage, which involves budget, OK? To live on her £19,000 salary and clear her debt, Ali needs to slash her spending to the bare essentials. So Benjamin and Jay set a budget which will force her to do just that. So, Ali, we're going to get into the real hard work here. We're a bit worried that you don't know how much money you spend per week. Do you have any idea? I haven't got a clue. You haven't got a clue? You honestly don't have a clue how much money you spend a week? A couple of hundred? Depends. No, you're right, love. You don't have a clue. <laughs> we thought we'd show you how much money you get through in an average week. Yeah. And that amount looks like that. Because the average amount you get through in a week is £700. A week? Yeah. And I might add that this is non-essential spending. So this is just stuff you spend <laughs> because you can. Or can't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure I can't. <laughs> what we'd like to do is to get you to go on what we call a cold turkey budget for seven days. The idea is to find out how you feel about the stuff that you're missing out on buying and to see which things are really important to you. So at the end of that week, you might think, actually, I didn't miss any of that. Or you might think, oh, I really missed this. How much do you think you could live on? I really don't know. Do you think you could seriously live for a week on £50? I couldn't do it on £50, I don't think. Really? Sixty. Yeah. I, I can't imagine it. Not if that's what I spend. And... Well, I tell you what, if we say 60 and we'll add on five <laughs> for a luxuries <laughs> for the week. I mean, it's not going to be easy. You know, that's £65. It's going to be a very, very different week. Practically everything that you would automatically spend on face products, beauty products, clothes shopping, internet shopping, things for the garden, things for the house, things for the car, all those things are not going to be part of your life for seven days. You'd better be prepared for the fact that it is going to feel really quite odd because this has been a habit for a very long time. So it isn't going to be easy. What's your first thought of the things you're going to miss out on? I just, I can't imagine, I'd probably miss out on everything because I can't imagine what I could do with mm. six, you know, what do you do? Remember that you've come into this process saying that you're terribly in debt and you want to change. I'll, I'll give it a go. That's all we ask. All we yeah. ask is that you just give it a go for seven days. And then tell us how it went. <laughs> to numb the pain, Ali arranges a girl's night in, and conversation soon turns to the daunting challenge ahead. So, in all honesty, do you think you're going to change? Do you think you can do it? If I'm brutally honest, I would love to change, but I'm absolutely scared stiff at what that change involves. I would love to. At the moment, I don't think I'm capable. I know I have to, and I do want to to a certain degree, but it scares the hell out of me. But Ali's friends are far from optimistic. I think this is possibly going to be one of the toughest things Madison is going to have to go through. I do feel quite sorry for her about Despite Ali's fears, it seems that a few glasses of wine and a good night's sleep have given her the will to succeed. I was quite shocked at the fact I spent £700 a week, let alone reducing it to 65 I think it's a bit mean. I'm pretty going for a laugh, and even though I can't see myself laughing, maybe crying this week, definitely not laughing, I will do it, purely because it is a challenge. One of the toughest challenges for Ali will be finding a substitute for the sheer thrill of shopping. Shopping is everything, it's, it's just what I do. Unable to clean out her bank account, Ali concentrates on the kitchen instead. Because today's only day one, I'm all right, I'm quite positive about it. What tomorrow will be like, I haven't got a clue. 
When things get bad, you shop. And now this week, when things get bad, I can't shop. So I'll clean. <laughs> Cleaning's not my forte, and shopping is. And I'll need a manicure when I've finished. <laughs> Stay with them nails, oh my lord. <laughs> It's been a difficult day for Ali, and her husband Michael is beginning to realise what an uphill struggle cold turkey will be. I think she's really, really going to struggle to um, stick to this. The only way that she will actually do it is just because she can be so bloody-minded at some times. We didn't realise what a big part of our lives it was. It was just everything. It was yeah. everything we did. It's everything we ever have done together. And... But I can't imagine, like, just not going out and buying nice clothes. That's what I mean. If Ali is to break the vicious cycle of spending, she'll need to work on the reasons behind her behaviour. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry has first-hand experience of working with addictive personalities. He believes that every spenderholic has a hidden motive. He's asked Ali to visit a neutral venue in Canterbury to pinpoint what this might be. I don't know what it is. But so. something happens when you're spending money, presumably. There's some emotional component. I mean, afterwards, I, I feel physically sick, yeah. Uh, so I want you to conjure to mind the feeling that you have after you've shopped, feeling slightly sick and anxious. And just in terms of that emotion, go back in your life and think about times in your life, you know, before now, when you felt those feelings. See if anything comes to mind. It's, it's a bit like the same sort of feeling like when you've lost something that's mm -hmm. precious to you. That's the only way I could really describe it. Loss in your life? Is there loss? It, has there been in the past? Well, my father passed away, so obviously that was mm. like that was a horrific loss. When did he die? It was just over 18 months ago. Right. Or was it a sudden thing? We were sort of expecting it, but we weren't. It was quite a, it was a bizarre situation. Um, Dad had been quite ill throughout his life and he'd battled with different oh, right. illnesses. Uh, Serious illnesses? Yeah. He, like cancer? Or he's had a, a brain tumour um, mm -hmm. before I was born, just before I was born. And he got through that. Right. And then he had three bouts of meningitis. The thought of losing my parents scared the mm. hell out of me. Really? Yeah, I can remember when I was very, very young, I used to cry myself to sleep. Why did you think about Dreading it? Dreading the day. Because I was always told that every day with Dad was precious. If you grow up with that sense that every day is precious... Think about how that translates to relating to material security as an adult yourself. You know, you're living for the day, aren't you? Yeah. Financially, you're living for the day. Um, not just financially. I mean, I, in brutal honesty, I am a great believer, you know, it's, today is a gift. I mean, that is, like they mm -hmm. say, that's why it's called the present. This notion of growing up with your father and, and having health problems and being told every day is a gift. Um, to be honest, I'd say that most people would say that that would be pretty frightening. No, I wouldn't say it was frightening. I'm, I'm glad that I was brought up knowing that because I, ha I did have such an amazing relationship with my dad mm. throughout my whole life. I agree with you. It's fantastic to kind of appreciate people while they're around. And I'm, you know, I'm really glad you had that closeness. But I think that the, you know, the fear that you talk about of being, say, two or three and crying about losing your parents... It's quite unusual. You know, I just want us to kind of bear that in mind. It may be too early for Ali to take on board some of Benjamin's suggestions, but Benjamin wonders whether more recent events may also underpin her excessive behaviour. I had a car accident. All right. And I was injured, and I had to have a year of sort of like physio. Was that? It was two weeks oh. before Dad passed, yeah. It was you had a car accident two weeks before yeah, he well, died? Yeah, literally just as we got him home. During that year, did you spend a lot of money you didn't need to? If I was to be totally honest, I had slipped into such a bad depression mm. after the accident. Mm. Obviously, do you know what I mean? It was like losing Dad and the car accident, and yeah. I wasn't happy with the way I looked, and that was probably the only time in my life that my confidence and my self-esteem hit an all-time low. Shopping was a way of cheering myself up, and because yeah. I wasn't working, I had more time to do it. So that was all I did. But everything cost money. Do you think the adrenaline rush of paying for something is a kind of antidote to depression? Yeah, without a doubt. Mm. Yeah, there's no denial. Because it may be that now there's still a residual part of sometimes feeling a little bit depressed and sort of slipping back into behaviour that mm. was very helpful for you when you were really depressed. Um, no, I'm, I, I totally agree. I, yeah. 
You know, that, that's exactly what I think. I mean, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a crap year. That's the only way, it probably, you know, the worst year of my life, and I hope that I will not have another year like it. I was daddy's little girl. He was a wonderful dad. He was a wonderful person. He was a great person to be around, and he was really kind and generous. Being quite a, a nasty bloke is something that I didn't ever imagine that I'd have to face, but... When her dad died in 2003, Ali was already in huge debt. She responded to her resulting depression in a well-worn fashion by embarking on a 20-month shopping spree. So I've spent an extra 21,000 in the last 20 months. Just, I suppose, trying to make me feel better. While Ali is able to talk about the depression following her dad's death, Benjamin notices a reluctance to face the issues left over from the time he was alive. The stuff I'm concerned about that she brought up was what happened earlier on in her life. Really the stuff about what happened when her father was alive rather than when he actually died because she spoke quite movingly about being two years old and thinking and crying about the fact that her father would perhaps die shortly. That's quite a burden to grow up with and to live with, especially since they had a very special and close relationship. I'd like to go deeper into those issues with her, but she does seem quite resistant. It's day five of Ali's week-long cold turkey, and today she's due at work. Ali works locally as a youth worker. Normally, it's a short trip in her nice, warm car. But with her £65 cold turkey budget in mind, Ali's making the ultimate sacrifice, ditching her precious BMW and cycling the five miles to work. Because I've only got this £65, and I can't really justify using petrol to go to work. I have two choices when it comes to travel. One is to cycle or I could use public transport to save money. But I won't use public transport out of principle. I just, I don't like it. It smells and you have to wait around for ages. So cycling is my only option. So that's what I'll do, cycle. But the next day, after one day of cycling effort, Ali decides to throw in the towel. I don't think I'm going to cycle anymore until the better weather comes in. In the summer, I, I won't mind at all whatsoever. But um, it's been really miserable, and by the time I get there, I'm just soaked, and I'm just not enjoying it. But... It's the end of cold turkey week, and Ali is heading in the right direction. But as she owes £46,000, she still has a long way to go. If Ali wants to drop the debt, she'll need to cut back on her biggest areas of spending. So Jay has popped down to Kent armed with a new budget to help Ali try to turn her fortunes around. So Ali, how have you got on on your cold turkey week? I have five pounds left. Five pounds so. left? God, that's amazing, because I know you were really worried, weren't you, that you weren't actually going to be able to do it. Initially, it did seem impossible, and then I think my stubborn streak took over, and I, I was thought, just right, yeah, I was really determined, and, yeah, that... That's why I stayed on. What I want to talk to you about today is your new budget, because, as you say, you've done your week. Nobody's going to expect you to live on 65 No, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so we've gone through and had a look at everything. Your current outgoings are £3,736 a month, and your current income level is £2,250 a month. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, we've got to make some cutbacks here. You know, when we come to motoring... The accessories for the car, which are currently running at £145 every month, that's come in at nil. Now, this is one you probably are going to miss, because clothes and underwear, currently you're spending £500 to £1,200 a month on that, and what's come in at the recommended budget is £75. So that <laughs> is going to be horrific. a big, big hit. Yeah. And the internet which, again, is an area that you find really easy to spend. That's clocking up £315 a month, and we'd like that to go to nil. No internet for a whole month. And I think you're going to find that quite difficult. Right, OK, so we've got quite a lot of work to do oh, here. Yes. <laughs> if that's your aim, then, yeah, best of luck. The internet shopping thing will be very difficult, reaching figure of zero, <laughs> which is, means basically, obvious, you know, what it says, I'm not allowed to purchase anything on the internet. Um, I'm very determined not to do that. While Ali may be willing to break her connection to the internet, her taste in expensive clothing may be harder to rein in. 
I don't actually think I'll be able to stick to a £75 budget. Not every month, like forever. It's, just, it's not going to happen. To buy a coat, you know, I might have to save for like about five months, in which case, you know, whatever season I'm buying the coat for is over. So it is, it's, it's not going to happen. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. If I did go to sort of like the lower market shops, chain stores, then, yeah, I'll probably get loads for £75. They practically give it away. They have to. Ali spends as much as £1,200 a month on clothes. If she's going to stand any chance of hitting her target of £75, she'll have to face her fear of cheap shops. Jay has come up with a plan to help Ali to change by putting her high standards to the test. Come and have a stand here, OK? Now, before I explain what we're going to do with these, I just want you to tell me a bit about this aversion you've got of going into certain cheaper shops. I don't walk into them. I don't even go through the door. I don't even stand outside. I just... I just can't do it. Have you ever sort of thought to analyse what it is, or you just think, ooh, no. I have a freak-out in cheap shops, therefore just... can't ever go there? To me, it is. I look at it like it's some form of phobia. I right. just can't do it. Well, what I was going to ask you to do today is we've got here five T-shirts, OK? Now, you can take your time, have a look at them, feel them, whatever. What I'd like you to do is to take these markers and with one being the nicest, most expensive, most alley-friendly T-shirt, I'd like you to just number them as you go along because you obviously are the expert on quality. <laughs> that is, um, I don't know, there's no shape to it. By feeling the T-shirts for quality, Ali must put them in price order, one being the costliest T-shirt, five being the cheapest. Because the material looks better quality. So you're sort of judging it on thickness of... Well, yeah, and stitching and... So you're OK touching them? Do you don't feel freaked? No, no, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that bad. That, at the moment, is my number one, and I don't know why, whether it's instinct or... See, I think it's the stitching on that one that makes it look really cheap. That's going to the bottom of the pile, is it? Yeah. You've quite easily worked that, out your I one think... and five, haven't you? Yeah. But it's the middle yeah. ranking bit. One, two, three, four, Okay, five. let's put your numbers on. The final decision, yeah? This is Ali's quality control test. All right. Well, number one is Marks and Spencer's T-shirt, £8. Number two, Gap, £10. Number three, Agnes B, £40. Number four, Primark, £2.50. Number five, New Look, <laughs> £6. You have managed to pick the two that you instinctively didn't like, or, in fact, you really didn't like number five, did you? That was easy yeah. to get down there. Ali has done well picking out the two cheapest T-shirts, but as she's placed the costliest T-shirt, the £40 top from Agnes B, at number three, Jay thinks Ali should be prepared to compromise her high standards and consider the mid-range high street brands. You know, is there a way that compromise could become a bit easier? I'm sure it could, but... I don't think you've really got a choice in this. You cannot spend the way you spend. So I think you've got to start being really honest with yourself about what you can compromise on and what you can't. And for me, this is a bang easy area. I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing. There is just certain places mm -hmm. that I'm just point blank, I'm just not going to do yeah. it. I really, I don't, I would rather go without. And it's okay. as simple as that. I am willing to go without stuff rather than go into certain shops and be wearing certain items of clothing. It's just not going to happen. I, I will go without, because okay. I'm just, you know, there's, there's certain standards that I'm just, I'm not lowering that low. It's about finding out where you're happy to compromise. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. If you want to go there and buy your stuff there, that's your choice. You do it. But me personally, I, I don't want to. And everybody looks the same. When they buy clothes from chain stores, everybody walks around looking exactly the same. And who wants to look like everybody else? But your argument doesn't work, because what happens if you're in an upmarket bar an argument, and ten people are wearing the same as you? It's Does your it, argument. Is it OK? Because it's no, Dolce & Gabbana. It's your argument. You're putting it across as an argument, but it's not an argument. It's what is important to me as an individual, not what is important to everybody else. 
Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that you're saying you I want to be dress differently. with this shit. No, I can't be fucked with it. Stick oh, yeah, it up yeah, your yeah. ass. Oh, it's no, nice. No. Fucking bullshit. You're just fucking making it up as you go along. Jay's attempts to sow the seeds of compromise have landed on rocky ground. After two days of radio silence, Ali finally decides that she wants to continue with her retail therapy, though she's still reluctant to tackle her cheap shop phobia. I'm pretty much willing to go with the flow for a lot of the whole process, but there is just certain things that I will not do, I've got no intentions of doing, and that being one of them. Concerned they have hit a brick wall, Benjamin and Jay call a meeting to take stock. The thing is about Ali is that I am actually really quite worried about how much she is prepared to compromise going through this process. Because at the moment, I don't think what we're doing or saying is working at all. I don't think Ali likes being confronted. She's not used to it and she doesn't respond very well. Psychologically, something like the spark of raw anger can be a good way into mm. a problem. So if she is, at least she's showing something, at least she's responding in some way. Yeah. And I can use that, I can pick up on that thread with her, see where that comes from and where it leads to, and to see if maybe that's something we can help her to change and get control of. Because it may be that that's an important part of her spending habits. I think in the meantime, what I might do is suggest that she goes to this great spa right near her because she never spends any time on her own and maybe what's needed is just a couple of days to sit, be on her own and reflect and really consider whether she's going to be committed to this. With relations between them strained, Jay suggests Ali goes to a health spa to give her a chance to collect her thoughts and learn to relax. It scares me mainly because I really, I genuinely am not used to being on my own. I'm very, very rarely on my own, maybe brief journeys here or there. I like to block a lot of things out and when you're with other people it's easy to do. But when you're on your own, that's your time to think about stuff. Ali can blow up to £1,000 in a single blue water shopping trip. So the £125 fee for a day at the spa is a fraction of the cost and may provide a healthy alternative to Ali's retail fix. After speaking to Jay, Benjamin is concerned that Ali's angry outburst may be part of the problem. He decides to do something that Ali would never dream of, venture inside a charity shop. Benjamin's in Canterbury to visit Ali's mum to uncover more about Ali's spending addiction. Tell me a bit then about her temper. It doesn't take a lot to set her off. Right. It really doesn't. Do you, do you remember what age she sort of started to show this side, of, you know, the, the temper side of her? From when she was young. Yeah. And you think this comes a bit from your own personality, do you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. And how did you cope with that temper around the children? Didn't. No? No. <laughs> what happened? No. <laughs> or my husband. <laughs> yeah. No, I have I used to lose my temper with them. Right. Really did. So she may have learned about kind of getting her own way of being angry from, me. from you. Yes, I, pl I do blame myself. Ali's relaxing into her day at the health spa and the calming atmosphere means there's no sign of her temper. surprised me. I have been able to relax. I didn't think I would, but so far, so good. I was quite stressed when I first came here, but I, I feel all right now. I feel quite enlightened, so yeah, I feel okay. Benjamin's feeling similarly enlightened from chatting to Ali's mum. If she feels guilty about losing her temper when Ali was younger, rejecting the financial SOS calls from her daughter will be even more tricky. If you're feeling guilty about stuff, mm. then yeah. presumably it's much harder yeah when they yeah. come and they want something yeah. to be firm. Yeah. Because perhaps you're thinking... I'm making up for what happened when they were little. Yeah. yeah. What do you think... What would you say characterises what happened when they were little that you're referring to like that? Well, if they came home and asked for things, we didn't have the money in them days. Sure. The wages weren't the same. My husband worked down the pit. We, we found it very hard sometimes to manage on monthly money. Yeah, I bet. 
and the girls see other children with things yeah. and you do feel guilty. You do feel guilty. Oh, I do think I could have been a better mum. Right. I really do. Well, on a kind of emotional level with the yeah. kids and yeah. time. Yeah. And, and having a husband that was poorly. Of course, when he went, I felt guilty because I was pushing my life onto them because I, I relied on my girls so much those, that first year. I'm sure, yeah. You know, that... Um, it was just unbelievable. And they were there for me. Mm. And now I feel I want to be there for them to repay back. I see. What happens with addicts is they often have people around them that, in the kind of psychobabble, they call enablers. Mm. If you're an enabler to an addict, then you are, in that slightly classic phrase, part of the problem and not part of the solution. Instead of just saying no, a slightly manipulative thing you can do is to say a couple of nice things and then say, but I'm going to say no. Mm. And it also allows you to say something which you know is what she doesn't want to hear, at the same time say some nice things which show that you love her and care about her. So it's just a, it's just a little tip that might be helpful. Benjamin is starting to form a clearer picture of what makes Ali tick, and the time spent unwinding at the spa has given Ali time to reflect. I was quite surprised how much I actually enjoyed spending time on my own, just being able to think about things. I haven't worried about things. That was my initial fear, that I would just sit there worrying about this, that and the other. Um, but I haven't really had any worries, like any stresses. I seem to have sort of like left them at home. I thought about stuff, but yeah, no, no stress as such, so yeah, it worked. With Ali now in a relaxed mood after her run-in with Jay, she has finally agreed to do some work on overcoming her phobia of cheap shops. Benjamin has invited Ali to Ashford to start breaking down the foundations of her anxiety. I know you've got a phobia about going into shops other than Prada and Dolce and Gabbana. I want to take you near to that experience, get you close to that, so that we can slow that down and sort of physically explore what's happening to you. Peacock's is a discount retailer, exactly the type of place Ali's phobia prevents her from entering. What's wrong, Ali? I just don't want to go in there. It's attached. <laughs> I just I don't want to do it. I don't want to take it away. It's OK, we haven't actually got near it yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. OK, <laughs> so calm down and we'll go and we'll... Uh... You gonna come? I haven't actually got to go in, though. You just no, wanna... no, I promise you I won't let you go in there. OK. How about if we no take attention. one step closer together? Just one step, see what happens. <laughs> come on. OK, worse. Do you get more I scared? Just... It makes me feel sick. Try another step. I'm, I'm... I'm... I'll walk to the door, but I can't go in. I'm okay. starting to itch. <laughs> gonna... Let's go to the door and see how the itching comes in. Yeah, but I can't go in. That's it's it. just in back now. That's, it. That's, it. That's no, your point. I'm not. Of the... I'm not going. Okay, no. tell me what happens here. Come, we'll come back to I that just, point. I can feel. I can feel all the blood rushing up to my head. Yeah. Because you're clutching your stomach. <laughs> What's going on yeah, in the stomach? Yeah, it feels really quite tight. If your solar plexus is clamping up, when you see that stuff, what it's saying in a way is that it's threatening your sense of self, isn't it? So you're actually afraid of going in there. I aren't am. You? And I'm very impressed. With Benjamin has a theory on the origins of Ali's phobia and thinks it could have everything to do with a childhood fear of losing her father. Because what I see in your spending, let's bring it back to your spending, mm -hmm. is I see a woman who basically is living almost as if you're kind of the wife of a millionaire. And what that's crazy. I wish I was. Yeah. <laughs> Life would be a lot easier. Oh, no, I don't, actually. But, but what it's creating is this illusion of a woman who needs nothing, or in other words, has everything that she wants. Benjamin thinks that to cope with the overwhelming fear of losing her father as a child, Ali has retreated into a fantasy world where she can always have whatever she wants and never fear losing it. I think when you cross that threshold into a cheap shop, what you're doing is crossing a threshold from Ali's magical universe where she needs nothing to the real world where people have to shop in shops like Peacock because they haven't got enough money. And I think for you to confront those limitations in yourself 
is extraordinarily threatening. If you carry on spending as you've been, you'll be lucky to be able to afford things in peacocks. And that scares the hell out of me. I so. know. And that's why I think you can't go in there, because I think you're terrified of being overwhelmed by, becoming, by, by having any needs at all. I want you to be able to go to Prada and look around and say, I can't afford anything this month. So it's beautiful to look at, but, yeah, but I'm going to leave the shot with nothing. Because I think for you, that is about discovering that Ali has limits in the real world. And I think it's something you never wanted to feel ever since the, you know, the real fear that you've talked about of losing your parents. You could be right. Benjamin has set Ali on the right path. She has learnt to appreciate spending time alone instead of spending money and taken steps towards overcoming the fear that fuels her cheap shop phobia. Now it's time for Jay to put aside the false start and give Ali some practical tips to cut back on her spending. Ali's biggest area of expenditure is on clothes, spending up to £1,200 a month. After seeing Benjamin, Ali has agreed to work harder on lowering her high standards. It's still a little too soon to visit a discount shop, so Jay has come up with an alternative plan. Ali, I brought you up to London to take you to the dreaded four-letter word sale, OK? Secret sample sales are held six times a year and are advertised in listings magazines. It's a chance for top-end designers to sell on excess stock, which means those in the know can pick up some real bargains. The trick is to get there early when the designers are setting up to guarantee the pick of the crop. For the first time in years, Ali crosses the threshold and visits a sale. Ali needs to rethink her entire shopping routine. Usually, she would spend hundreds of pounds coordinating outfits, but Jay thinks there's a cheaper alternative. What you don't want to be doing is setting yourself up for more purchases to fit in with colours that you're buying. Doing things like maybe buying khaki, denim, black, those colours are going to go with anything that's in your wardrobe. Something like this denim skirt, which is reduced from 185 to 80 quid. It's a designer Marc Jacobs skirt. You can wear it in the winter, you can wear it in the summer, you can wear it in the day, you can wear it in the evening. So for 80 quid, it's a good purchase and it will pull things together in your wardrobe. That's what you need to start doing, re-budgets. I do like that skirt and that is the sort of thing I would buy, maybe in a different environment. Saying that, I probably would try and be brave and buy it in this environment if yeah. it wasn't so short. When Ali goes shopping because she's angry, she ignores the price tags and buys clothes for the sake of it, even when they don't fit. I've gone home and I've picked up stuff that's not even my size. And I've gone home and been like, you know, what the hell have I bought that for? Mm. Maybe an interesting thing to explore might be that if you find yourself in that situation and it is at home, that you might start to actually start keeping receipts in an mm. envelope so that when you are calmed down, you can take something back. Because yeah. there's so no point in you having a size 16 skirt hanging no. in your wardrobe, do you know what I mean? That is I mean, just dead money. I mean, you have made progress because you actually came through the door. Yeah, I do feel more comfortable than I did before I started this whole yeah. process. So I think, yeah, there is, there is improvement. There's definitely improvement. Something husband Michael has noticed. That's a, yeah, it's a big achievement, actually, um, getting Ali through the door into a sort of outlet sale type place. Maybe in the future, encourage her to do it a bit more and uh, make the pennies go a bit further. I actually felt a lot more comfortable. Not comfortable enough to maybe purchase something, but comfortable enough to stay in that environment. A bit further down the line, I might pluck up the courage to do the same thing again. Ali's other main area of expenditure is on her car. Ali is used to blowing a fortune on her BMW, but now it's time to get some of it back. When Ali bought her beloved car, she replaced the wheels with brand new alloys. Since then, the old ones have been gathering rainwater in her back garden, despite being worth £200. Due to my new budget being so tight, because obviously I'm going to try and concentrate now on paying off the things. I'm trying to find things to sell, so the only thing I've actually got that's no use to me is my old alloys off the Beamer. I'm going to put them for sale, see what I get. And the alloys aren't on the market for long before there's a buyer. Uh -huh. yeah. How you doing, all right? Hello, I'm fine. Well, I'll give you a couple of hundred quid from us, say, or I'll give you more if they fall good tyres, but... No, that's fine, is... honestly. Right. There you go. Spot on. Check it if you want. No, I'll cost you. Since I've been doing the process, I, I, I have become less materialistic. 
Whereas a month ago, I just I, I point blank, I wasn't going to sell them. But now I've actually done it, I'm, I'm not really that bothered. I'm, I'm quite grateful they've gone. They were a bit of an eyesore and I've made 200 pounds. So. Ali is beginning to make sound financial progress. Benjamin is pleased that the work she is doing on her underlying issues is finally feeding through to her bank balance. But there's one more thing he wants her to do. Benjamin is concerned that unless Ali makes moves to deal with her temper, her anger could erupt at any time, undoing all the progress she's made. He has brought her to a boxing gym to unleash her frustrations. make anger in your life a positive thing and not a negative thing, okay? So one of the things that we want to do is get you to learn to really connect with your anger in a way that helps you rather than perhaps as destructive in your life. Come on, you're going to be my million dollar baby. Spend like a millionaire, hit like one. Come on, hit the back. Hit it. <laughs> hit it. Come on, hit them back. Okay, that was great, Ali. That was really good. I think that's a really great warm-up. I can see that you can connect with your anger quite well. What I want to do now is take it to the heavy bag, try to put some feelings together with some thoughts, together with some action, and give you an idea of how you can take care of your anger in the future. Ready? Come on, then. Let's do it. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about someone or something or anything that's pissed you off and actually talk about it while you're hitting the bag. I think there's only one thing that makes me really, really angry. Go on, then. And that's my dad's doctor. In putting her frustrations into words, Ali finally reveals the source of so much internal anger. Is there a small sense in which you feel like there's a sense of release there, emotionally, not just physically? To say those things and to put action to it, not just to talk about it, but to actually grind it out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it has to be a form of release. Do you think that you've ever gone out and spent money because you carrying this anger around and you're frustrated or you couldn't do something about it or... I really do. So and I am aware of that. When I get angry or sort yeah. of like peed off or whatever, I will go out and it's like, oh, what the hell? Do you... I mean, I've got nothing to lose and off I go yeah. and a couple of grand later, then I'm feeling even worse than I was when I started because I know I shouldn't have bought the things I've bought. Yeah. What's um, the most recent time you remember kind of spending angrily? When uh... Michael and I have arguments. Mm -hmm. Because I know he hates me shopping so much, and I'm just like, what the hell? Do you? I mean, if we're going to row anyway, and you know, we're going to have a, like a major argument, I might as well have a major argument and lots of nice new clothes or makeup or whatever. Yeah, so it's a bit of punishment. Yeah. But also maybe you, he has already angered you. You've had an argument, mm. and you're carrying around anger that you haven't been able to dissipate. So it just triggers off, and it's all bang. Yeah. Spending instead of punching. Five weeks ago, Ali was a spendaholic and £46,000 in debt. With a unique phobia of cheap shops, Ali had a stark choice, change her ways or face bankruptcy. Since then, she's confronted her phobia head-on and even visited a sale. She's finally seen sense and sold her alloys, raising £200, and made moves to channel her anger. Something husband Michael thinks has triggered a huge effect. All in all, her, her whole self seems to be more relaxed and more sort of t taking life in her stride rather than sort of running headlong into it all the time. Her whole lifestyle is, is changing now. Um, I think there's still a long way to go. But I am shocked, to be quite honest, with the sort of effect it has had on her. I do feel better for doing the process, so I've benefited in a lot of ways, really. When this is all over, I do hope that 
it has paved the way to a new life because I, I can't continue the way I was. Ali has made massive progress, but there's still some unfinished business at her mum's charity shop in Canterbury. I'm trying to sort out some stuff to give to the charity shop where my mum works, something I've been meaning to do for a long time. But I think because of the whole process and my way of thinking has changed uh, this last few weeks, really, it has given me that prompt to let go of material objects that we don't need. So I've had a really good sort out today. I've packed everything up. Um, and the next part of the mission is to get to the charity shop and maybe walk through the door and drop it off. Uh, I think Mum would be pleased. For the very first time, Ali goes to visit her mum at work in the charity shop. Mama, all right? Oh, I'm great. <laughs> You'll come in. Oh, no, I don't. Come I in. can't believe Come I'm in and in. buy. I'm not buying. Oh, lovely, thank you. <laughs> but I'll deliver. Great. That's smashing. I think I will come back and visit you when you're working now. Yeah. Because I do feel OK, so... Could come for coffee. I've got no qualms about coming in here. And I might even help you out. All right, then. OK. OK, yeah. that'd be great. I'll keep you up with that. <laughs> I will do it. I yeah. will. I never thought I'd see this day. I never thought I'd come in here. No. I really think you have changed, Ali. You really have. It has. It's maybe set the path a different path for me to follow is just whether or not I um, I keep to it. Dad would be proud that you're trying to do something, sweetheart. OK? I really do know that. Ali has finally come to the end of her retail therapy, so Benjamin and Jay have come back to her home in Deal to see how she's got on. Here we are again. So, here we go. Hi, Ali. Hello. Nice to see you. And Jay, come in. Thanks. Thanks. very much. So, Ali... How have you been getting on? One of the most difficult things out of this process has been that throughout my life, if I've wanted something, I've just got it. Like when I was little, my parents would buy it. As I got older, the bank manager would buy it. You know, I've, if I want something, I would just get it. Yeah. And that has been quite difficult, just coming to terms with the fact that I can't have everything I want. Yeah, it is tough. Knowing when to draw the line. But I think I've managed it quite well. I, I am secretly shocked how well I have done. So, Ali, we slashed your internet budget to zero. How have you been coping with that? I haven't bought anything. Have you missed all. that? No, not really. It, initially, I did. Mm. The first few weeks, it was really difficult because I was on there doing work and then I think, yeah. oh, I'll check. And then I get emails from companies I've bought from saying... Would you like to buy some that, more? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And now I don't even read them. I just delete them as soon as anything comes in. You don't companies. even look at the temptation no, itself. I don't look That's good. at all. Now, clothing is an area that we really cut back on because your budget was £75 a month now for clothing. How have you been getting on with that? I actually, in the last month, I've spent about 150 So That's there has right. been an improvement. Yeah, then. definitely. Yeah. I actually found a pair of jeans that had been marked down from £100 to 40 Wow, that's a good saving. Um, is that the same thing as being on sale? Well, it, I just went into, you know, this like small boutique type shop mm -hmm. and then by the change rooms there was a rail and it didn't look like a, mm -hmm. a sale rail. And I just saw that and these jeans were just like there, right at the front and my size and everything. So. so, Ali, one of the other things we highlighted for you when we were first here was the money you spent on accessorising your car. Now, your new budget, quite sensibly, I thought, was zero for that. Um, how's that gone? At some point, um, I'm thinking about maybe trading the car in and wow. buying something a little bit more sensible. Oh, I was worried you were about to say for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to. Ali has one more surprise for the experts, which will hopefully make her a calmer customer. Husband Michael has bought Ali a high-tech punch bag, allowing her to vent her frustrations on a slightly different type of plastic. This is Slam Man. Slam Man was bought for me as a present yes. after the day boxing that we did. Because I like enjoyed it so much. Yeah, I did. It, it was the best thing I've got out of the whole process, without a doubt. The okay. thing I've most enjoyed. Well, apart from saving, like, two grand in four <laughs> weeks. Yeah, this is more fun. This oh, is okay. more fun. <laughs> Do you think that's helped you emotionally in any ways? I think it's got to, because it is all releasing, isn't it, when mm -hmm. you're... That's the whole point of it. Do you yeah. find it quite useful to literally just sort of vent it all at him? Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. 
it's just trying to... I mean, I've always been good at containing anger because yeah. I have to, because of my job, so it's quite easy to, to go through days with the, letting it build up. Yeah. And then, but now I can come out, you know, after three you days and, it. yeah, that's it. Before, you used to get angry and then shop. Mm. Oh, I did, without a doubt. So is this sta saving you from having to shop? Yeah. Definitely. It, and it is something else to fill my time with. It's something mm -hmm. I enjoy doing that's going to get me fit as well. So. And also a great way to release your emotions rather mm. than put them into other things. That's it. Negative things. You know, you've done really well, Ali, I have to say. You seem more centred and more calm. And I think that maybe engaging with some of your, your emotional issues, like the phobia of cheap stuff you seem to be getting over slightly, you've been to your mother's shop, you're doing your anger work here, and, coincidentally, magically, you seem to be saving a lot of money. Mm, yeah. So it's all knitting together quite well, and I think you've been terrific, terrific sport. <laughs> and I um, hope, it, hope it lasts. Hope it's worked. Cheers. No, thanks for your help. Initially, the first few weeks, I just didn't feel that I was getting anywhere, and it was like, you know, the ideas were, like, a bit too far-fetched, and not me. They really weren't for me at all. But yeah, it, it was worth doing. The process was worth doing. I know in the early days I couldn't see it, but now as I look back over the last few weeks, definitely, I, I have changed. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.